We're now going to add a development and debugging tool called xdebug, which I'm going to show you how to use as a step debugger, but it can also be used as a profiler and various other things. What I will say about this part of the tutorial is if anything's going to go wrong, then it's going to be in this section. However, uh, my tips for overcoming any problems is first grab my code from the repository, try it with that, and in most scenarios, I think that will fix it. If you're still struggling, then just post a message in the comments, explain what operating system you're using and what versions of everything and then we can take it from there. This place that we're going to start is in our PHP Docker file where we're going to uh, make some changes but also we're going to add some new stuff and I'm going to talk to you about something called multi-stage builds. Now I'm not going to make you watch me type all the stuff that we're going to do here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drop each line in and then explain them and add comments as we go. So from top to bottom, here we go. The first one I'm going to add is a really cool image and it's a PHP extension installer. And so this will really help us because xdebug requires a load of other extensions and a load of other software to be installed in order to install xdebug. However, with this PHP extension installer, that stuff is all taken care of behind the scenes and we can just run a very simple command. And so what I'm going to do, and the reason I've dropped it in right at the top here, is I'm just going to replace what I've already been using to install extensions with the new thing that we're going to use here. And so what I'll actually do is I'll comment out the old command so you've still got that reference, but the new command is going to be this. And so the first thing that we're going to do here is just set this functionality, which as you can see from the comments, it's quite a common Linux command that you'll see this, but it basically means exit on errors, exit on any unset variables, and print every command as it is executed. And then we are using our new uh, command for installing PHP extensions, install PHP extensions, and then this part, as you can see, is still the same as what we were doing. We're installing the PDO MySQL extension. Hopefully all that makes sense and should be fairly easy to follow. The next thing we're going to consider is multi-stage builds. They're not that difficult to understand, but they're not that easy to explain. What we're doing here is we're pulling the base image, and then each command is just adding an extra layer onto the one build. However, we can take our build here, give it an alias. So if I say from image as app, I can now make a reference to this and start another build on top of that. I hope that makes sense. So I now have an app image from which I can build upon. So I can now say from app as, and then I can give this whatever name I want or whatever alias I want. And so I'll call this app dev because what I'm building here, I just want to use this for development purposes. And there are commands which I can run and I'll show you them shortly where I can just target this build. I can say I want to target app dev, which means it will build everything. So then it will uh, build app and then I will build on top of that with app dev. Sorry if that sounds like a really messy explanation, but it's the best way I can think of doing it. And so that makes it optional. For example, if I didn't want this stage of the build, then I can run a command where I'm saying just build me this part. And so we can have that for production where we don't want to build and add our dev dependencies like xdebug. And then we can have this further build where we say, okay, build this and then we can add xdebug, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna drop some resources on top of there, just a couple of links you can go and look up multi-stage builds, and you can go up and look at, go and look at targeting certain sections of builds. Okay, let's make a little bit of space for ourselves here. So like I say, xdebug has different functionalities. You can use it as a profiler, you can use it as a, a step debugger, or you can just set it to off because it can be quite process heavy and quite intrusive. And so as a default, we are going to actually set the debug mode to off. And then we'll be able to just pass in an environment variable. So have we covered environment variables? Yes, we did it earlier here where we set composer allow super user. And we can pass that environment variables in like this way. So we're given a default value of off. However, when we go to run the command to spin up this container, we can set it to whatever. And we're going to be setting it to debug for our debugging needs. 
The next thing we're going to need is some special PHP configuration in order for Xdebug to work. So we're going to have to go and create an INI file which has some settings inside of there. We've not created it yet, but this is the path that we're going to use. So this is going to be uh, confd in our PHP folder here, and we're going to call the file xdebug.ini. And this is going to be the location where that needs to be copied to in our container. So we're going to take care of this file in a moment, but we'll finish off this file first. Our final step is to install xdebug. And so we're using our new installer here for PHP extensions. What I can tell you is that if we weren't using this, this command would be a lot longer and a lot more prone to errors. And this is really good. It takes care of everything for us without us having to worry about having all the right software and things installed in order to install xdebug. It's a real lifesaver actually. Next we need to create our xdebug.ini file inside of this location. So inside of PHP we'll create a folder called confd and then in there we're going to create a file called xdebug.ini. And then behind the scenes, I'm just going to drop in the information that we need. Okay, so this looks like quite a lot of information for what is essentially just one setting. So this is basically the information that is important to us. The host has a changing IP address, so your host computer, or none if you have no network access. So it's saying we recommend that you connect to a special DNS name, host docker internal, which resolves to the internal IP address used by the host. So your IP address used by the host can be quite fluid, it can be changing. And so by using this, it means that internally Docker will know where to connect to that host. And then just bringing your attention to this line at the bottom, it's for development purposes only. This won't work in a production environment outside of Docker Desktop. So you won't have Docker Desktop in a production environment anyway. The links at the top, they just link to information on pretty much the same thing. In fact, this spiel I got here, I think I got it from this link anyway. Feel free to check it out if you want more information on that stuff. Okay, we are now on the final stages. We need to go to our Docker Compose file and we're going to add some new entries to our app service. And the first one is regarding our build. So if you remember what I was saying about multi-stage builds and targeting different stages. So for development, I'm going to say, yes, I would like to actually build this stage here, app dev. And so in this file, I would say, yeah, I want to target this stage here. And so underneath the where it says Docker file, I'm going to say app dev. For my production build, if we go to our other Docker compose file, what I would do here is actually say target app, and then it would only build as far as here. And so again, just to reiterate what will happen with the dev build, it will build this stage, which is all of this, and then it will take that and build on top of it with app dev. And the reason we're doing it this way, if it's not already obvious, is that we don't want to be dropping debugging tools into production. It's only something which you want locally for your development. Okay, next I'm going to add a new volume mounting, and this will be for our xdebug.ini, and then on the end of this, I'm just going to append this here, RO, and RO means read only, because this is not something that we want to be writing to in our container. We've set our configuration, we're happy with it, so we're just going to leave it as read only. Next, under environment variables, I'm going to add a new one, and this is going to be the same as what we put in our Docker file, and this is xdebug mode. And so, this funny syntax that you see here, what we're saying is if we don't have an xdebug uh, mode environment variable being passed in, then default to off. So it's a colon, a hyphen, and then the default value that you want. So xdebug mode will always default to off. And it's going to be when we actually run the docker compose up command that we will set this xdebug mode environment variable. You can do it in a .env file, that's an option, but I'm going to show you how we can do it from the command line as well. This final one will be extra host. So if you recall what we said about host docker internal in our xdebug.ini file, 
this setting here that we're using basically is so that this will work with Linux. And so if you are using Linux, then you need to add this extra host here in order for this to be defined for Linux. Okay, that's been quite a lot of work, but I think we're ready to spin this up. What I will say is just make sure that your files look exactly the same as mine, because if you get any parts of this wrong, then it definitely won't work. This is the most fiddliest part. Okay, so the command that we need to run, docker compose hyphen f, we're telling it to use our dev file because in there we have specified that we are using app dev as our target for the build, so that's very important. And we've made changes to our docker file, so here I'm saying build and hopefully this will work. And so what you will find is that the xdebug installation stage will take a while because there is quite a lot of it to install. But don't worry, just watch it do its thing. If, like I say, if you followed all the steps that I have used, then it should install eventually. Let's go and try this out. So if you've ever used PHP info, we're going to use one called uh, xdebug info. So in app public index.php right at the very top just underneath our opening php tag just drop this in there xdebug info and then you just need to visit localhost colon 80 and hopefully you should see this so this is your xdebug configuration quick scroll down you might see some of the things that we've looked at here is the xdebug mode environment variable that we were talking about. If you remember, we set it to off, which means that all of these things are disabled. However, in a moment, we're going to enable step debugger so we can set xdebug mode equals debug. And then hopefully we should see that that is enabled. Let's see if there's any other things which we might have looked at. So additional INI files passed. As you can see, there's our xdebug INI file, which we created. Again, xdebug mode currently off. xdebug client host. So again, that's one that we set host docker internal. And by default in, I think this is version three of xdebug, it uses port 9003 by default. Anyway, I'll let you go through all this in your own time. It'd be a pretty boring uh, tutorial if I went through every piece of configuration in an xdebug file. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna run Docker Compose up again, but this time I'm going to pass in an environment variable. I can do that from the command line by setting that before I run the command. So x debug mode equals, and what you want is debug, lowercase d-u-b-u-g, d-e-b-u-g. And I don't think I need build this time. So xdebug mode equals debug and then the same command docker compose dash f for file docker compose .dev .yaml up hyphen d. Let's try this again. And so as you can see, the only change there was the docker php app. So can you think why that might be? It's basically because that's the only thing that has changed and what has changed the environment variable. So xdebug mode is now debug. So this is looking quite promising. Let's go back and run or refresh our browser. Okay, perfect. So ignore this error. I'm getting this because I have like a Google Chrome extension. Uh, I've got my little xdebug thing enabled there. I'll talk about that in a moment. So I'll turn that off. But the thing that we are looking at and the thing which is currently making me happy is that xdebug or step debugger is now enabled. So hopefully you should now be able to go and start using that and stepping through our code. For actually running xdebug, I have this nice simple setup where I use this Chrome extension called xdebug helper and I can just enable this little bug here as well as enabling this little telephone thing here and then when I run the request, it'll just first come up with like a pop-up which will say do you want to accept this request and it'll show me some configurations such as the host etc and then it's up and running. If you're not using that and whatever IDE you might be using the configuration might be a little bit more involved but do a bit of research on it you'll soon find the information that you need. Let me talk you through how it's going to work for me or let me give you a demonstration of how this works for me. So first off in index.php, I'll remove this because I don't need it now. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in something called a breakpoint here. So this isn't actually an Xdebug lesson, by the way. This is a uh, tutorial on installing Xdebug in Docker for development purposes. But it wouldn't be a complete uh, tutorial if I didn't actually show you it working. So I put in something called a little breakpoint or a breakpoint. And then I go and enable my bug here, debug. The other stage that I need to do is I just click on this little telephone so it's now listening for debug connections as you can see from the little tooltip thing there. And that means that I can just go and uh, hit refresh or hit enter on this. And then automatically PHP Storm will come up with this. It says it's got an incoming connection from xdebug, server name is localhost, so that's what we actually defined in our default.conf uh, nginx configuration. Server port is 80, that is correct. File path on server is this, and that is correct. So I'm gonna accept that. And so now we are actually at this stage, it has stopped here. And I can inspect all the different variables which are set. And so the only one which is set so far is this one client. And as you can see, I have that variable. And so I can go into it and just see what things are set. I'll find a more easier one. So if we look at things like translations, we should be able to uh, get something back from that. So if I click this, then it will step into the next part of the code. And you just keep stepping through. As you can see, it shows you all the different uh, values which are currently set for different variables. Let's go to the next one. Okay, and then once I step over languages, it means I now have uh, the languages variable there. So I've only got three, vari three languages in my database. Let's go and inspect these. And so as you can see, the first one is an instance of language because I created a language model and it has an ID one, an ID of one and the name of French. And so I've also got inside of that one with an ID of two and a name of German. I'm sure you get the idea. So as you can see, nice, pretty powerful tool here. You can do uh, quite a lot with Xdebug. Really good if you're working on a code base that you're not familiar with. You can just go stepping through the code, seeing which variables are set, seeing how things are getting set, etc. But like I say, this is not an Xdebug tutorial. If you did get to the stage where you were able to print out Xdebug info and debug was enabled, then I'd say well done. You've got all the hard work out of the way. And then if you want to use this tool, then just go and find some videos on YouTube on how to use it for your IDE. You'll soon find the information that you need.